Hello everyone, my name is Vic of EU's Market Biz and in this video I am going to share with you the updates on the newsletter that you're going to receive once you subscribe at preferredcurrency.news. So without further ado, let's proceed to the website. So this is the website that um, where you can subscribe for the newsletter, so it's called preferredcurrency.news. So it's worth $15 a month or $180 a year. Okay, so you can also um, you can also use crypto as payment for the subscription here. So just click Coinbase here, or if you want to pay in fiat, just click PayPal here. Okay, so let's go to the newsletter. Right, so here are the updates on the newsletter. So these are the news updates. So the first one is let's open it first. Okay. So the first one is how Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple-backed loans will change crypto. Alright, so let's go to the main topic. So we won't... Um, I mean, we let's go to the uh, full story. So that we won't have... Or we won't waste our time transferring from... What you call this one? Um, from tab to tab. Okay, so let's start. So... The advent of cryptocurrency-backed loans will have profound ramifications on the crypto markets. Although several exchanges and credit companies have tried to enter this space, none of them have achieved market dominance. The idea of crypto—I mean, the idea for cryptocurrency-backed loans—has existed for a while. Many ICOs has, have successfully raised money for the idea, and currently there are several dubious companies operating in the space. Okay. Additionally, there are also a number of smart contracts that allow the, the decentralized lending on the Ethereum blockchain. That said, none of these services have gained considerable traction. The obstacles to establishing a reputable lending company are many, and consequently the industry will either need to consolidate or wait for a large player to enter the market. However, once there is a major player, these cryptocurrency collateralized loans would have a profound impact on cryptocurrency investors and users. These services would increase market liquidity, make obtaining crypto easier, and decrease the transaction costs for I mean of acquiring crypto. So, how crypto collateralized loans work? So, crypto loans would work by utilizing a deposit of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple, or another major cryptocurrency as collateral. Prior to obtaining a loan, a borrower is first assessed for credit worthiness. Oftentimes, a borrower's credit score, demographic data, and online activity are assessed to determine credit worthiness. The score obtained from this data determines the loan's interest rate and the ratio of the collateral needed for the loan. Then, a borrower deposits cryptocurrency and receives a fraction of its value in fiat or another asset. Depending on whether the issuer of the fiat is an organization or an individual determines whether the loan is a peer-to-peer -peer or a conventional institutional loan. These collateralized loans are an important service for cryptocurrencies. A robust credit industry around crypto collateralized loans would benefit adoption and reduce the compli complications associated with owning crypto. If a reliable, well-regulated crypto credit industry existed, it would benefit users in three main ways. Reducing tax burden, providing trading leverage, easing crypto to crypto conversion. So reducing tax burden. So taxes under US general accepted accounting principles or GAAP and globally recognized international financial reporting standards IFRS are a major concern for cryptocurrency users. Transactions such as exchanging one cryptocurrency for another or using cryptocurrency to purchase a good or service trigger capital gains and losses. In the United States, the tax on short-term capital gains is a whopping 30%. Many other countries have capital gains taxes around this figure. By using an intermediary lender, a user can prevent these taxes. If someone borrows fiat using cryptocurrency as collateral, 
purchases made with that fiat do not incur capital gains or losses. Furthermore, such lending allows crypto holders to spend fiat while waiting for long-term capital gains to apply for two holdings. In the US, if cryptocurrency is held for a year or more as an investment, then those gains are given favorable tax treatment with a 10% long-term capital gains tax, okay, providing trading, trading leverage. Another benefit of cryptocurrency collateralized loans is margin trading. Margin trading is the practice of borrowing funds against a financial asset such as stocks or crypto to amplify gains or losses from market movement. Many major exchanges like Bitmax, Bitfinex, Polynex, and Kraken already offer margin trading. However, the terms of the service can oftentimes be predatory with high collateral requirements, exorbitant interest rates, and unreliable service. Access to loans can provide another mechanism for margin traders to gain additional leverage. A competitive market for these loans would mean lower interest rates and lower collateral requirements. So easing crypto to crypto conversions. The final benefit of the collateralized loans is easing of trading friction. Trading friction occurs when it is difficult to directly exchange two assets with limited liquidity or when the cost of trading one asset into another are high. An example of trading friction is when someone is trying to purchase an obscure altcoin using another altcoin. Because the liquidity in such markets is low, then the spread on such a transaction, transaction is high, meaning higher trading costs. To circumvent these issues, most users first con convert into an intermediary such as Ethereum or Bitcoin before trading into the other altcoin, but this trade also incurs its own costs. Lending services can ease trading friction. Furthermore, some players in this market are exploring crypto to crypto loans. These loans would all would allow a user to borrow one cryptocurrency against another. For example, using Bitcoin as collateral to borrow, to borrow Ethereum. These kinds of loans would increase the liquidity of these markets and consequently decrease transaction friction. However, to have a noticeable impact on trading friction, these services would need to gain more fraction, I mean traction risks with collateralized loans. Although these kinds of loans offer a solution to some of the inconveniences of crypto, there are also a number of risks involved. First, margin calls on a loan from price volatility can penalize a borrower. Second, crypto-related lending is ripe with Ponzi schemes and scams. And finally, regulators can disrupt legitimate firms in the industry. Margin calls. Given the volatility of cryptocurrency, every time there is a drop in prices, there is a possibility of a margin call. A margin call happens when the value, value of the deposit decreases and the lender needs additional collateral or requires the lender to sell existing collateral to cover potential losses. Many cryptocurrencies that would be used as collateral for these loans are extremely, extremely volatile. Even if the price tanks for a fraction of the second, it would still trigger a margin call and liquidate some or all of a borrower's collateral. Potential Scams As highlighted in a TechCrunch expose, between one-third and one-fourth of the 3,500 crypto-backed lending platforms in China were either Ponzi schemes, were involved in police investigations, or made it difficult for users to withdraw deposited funds. These findings are not limited to Chinese lending platforms. Lending around cryptocurrency is ripe for scams, especially peer-to-peer -peer lending. Oftentimes, these companies operate on the fringes of the law and take advantage of the decentralized nature of crypto. When these unscrupulous companies go out of business, those that suffer that consequences are often the users. If a loan provider were to default, or worse yet, steal user deposits, then borrowers usually have limited recourse, given that these companies usually operate out of the countries with loose regulations. Regulatory risk. Okay. On the other hand, I mean, on the other end of the subs of the spectrum, regulators themselves are also a risk of this industry. Entering ma major markets such as the United States, Europe, China, or South Korea, 
require an enormous investment in legal compliance. Through the introduction of new regulation or the more stringent enforcement of existing regulation, regulators can seriously hamper lending companies. As much as regulation is necessary for a fair and trustworthy credit market, regulation can also be impediment impediment for legitimate firms. The future of lending. So cryptocurrency collateralized loans are a valuable service in the space. These loans would lessen the tax burden increase the ease of trading and reduce the cost of conversion for cryptocurrency users. The market is ready for a legitimate firm to enter the industry, whether that entrant is an ICO that achieves breakout success, an incumbent crypto company like Coinbase entering the space, or a traditional player such as Square Inc. exploring bait loans. The industry is waiting for a reliable source of credit. As the industry matures around cryptocurrency, it uses and utility it uses and utility will rise with it. At its core, the price of any technology is tied to the value it provides its users. Financing and credit is just one more value and application. So that is the main story of the day. So how Bitcoin, Ethereum and Ripple back loans will change crypto. So the next one is Ripple challenges Swift payment networks, CEO Brad Garlinghouse says. So Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse denied rumors. Okay, so let's read it here denied rumors where were we here it is saying that the company might work with swift and said that ripple was actually overtaking the traditional payments Ripple Labs, the company behind the third largest cryptocurrency in terms of market capitalization, is confident that its blockchain solutions will help it overtake the traditional SWIFT network, CEO Brad Gardinghouse reportedly said. SWIFT has dominated the global financial and security transfer market for years, but Ripple is ready to challenge it by leveraging distributed ledger technology or DLT. SWIFT, which stands for the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Tele Telecommunications, was founded in 1973 and is currently used by enterprises and individuals to transfer funds across the borders. Today, the entity has over 11,000 customers working in the corporate sector and capital markets in almost all of the countries in the world. However, unlike Swift, Ripple's blockchain-based system doesn't involve intermediaries and acts as a decentralized global network, which ensures faster transactions. Garlinghouse said that his firm had attracted several new clients in the period when financial companies are keen to adopt blockchain to address logistical challenges caused by old software. The San Francisco-based company uses its XRP currency as an intermediary coin when cover converting fiat currencies. This approach is used in Meet Ripple's XRapid, which went live last month. Recently, the Ripple CEO attended the Singapore FinTech Festival he told Bloomberg on the sidelines of the conference, the technologies that banks use today that Swift developed decades ago really hasn't evolved or kept up with the market. Swift said not that long ago they didn't see blockchain as a solution to correspondent banking. They've got well over 100 of their customers saying they disagree. Garlinghouse also denied the rumor saying that Ripple's, Ripple might collaborate with Swift for a potential joint project. What we're doing and executing on a day-to-day -day basis is in fact taking over Swift, the CEO added. Okay, so let's, let's read further. So, Ripple challenges Swift. Payments Network CEO Brad Garlinghouse um, says, right? So that is the second um, main headline. So, right, so let's go to the third main headline. So, electronics giant Bosch partners with Yoda to launch new device for IoT data collection. Okay. So engineering and electronics manufacturer Bosch has partnered with IOTA, integrating its new data collection Internet of Things or IoT device within the centralized IOTA data marketplace. According to a tweet from Bosch November 12, the IOTA marketplace is a decentralized 
data marketplace where parties can buy or sell access to active data streams using MEM mass authenticated messaging. According to a post on Bosch Vlad, MAM, a second layer data communication protocol that allows for data to be shared peer to peer securely via an encrypted channel, data subscribers can in this way trust the source and integrity of data even though the identity of the source is masked as the blog post outlines. Bosch new connectivity device Bosch KDK or XDK rather cross the domain development kit is described as a programmable sensor device and Internet of Things prototyping platform which also includes I mean which also function as a sensor node solution the device reportedly combines various sensor data storage and network technology so that users with varying levels of programming experience can collect data real-time and sell it on the Yoda marketplace as Bosch note previously there has been an open I mean no open source code accessible for develop develops to connect Bosch XDK and the Yoda Tangle which is the name given to the architecture of IOTA's protocol. Tangle is, a different, is different from blockchain in that it does not use blocks or mining, but rather is built upon a directed acyclic graph or DAG, a topographically ordered system in which different types of transactions run on different chains and in the network simultaneously. Alongside the XDK's device, the XDK to MAM development team have therefore now made the source, I mean the open source code available for the IOTA community to facilitate interaction between the hardware and tank. Okay, so those are the three headlines of the newsletter. Okay. Right, so let's go down to see the updates on the um, research list on all the Google spreadsheet. So these are block port. Cardano, Monero, Nano, Nulls, Bitcoin, EOS, Teller, Dabcoin, and Bitbay. So these are the tokens. So once you open the open spreadsheet, you will have access to um, this spreadsheet. So this um, this spreadsheet is where you can find the blue ones or the colored blue ones. So let's wait for it to load. The colored blue ones on the spreadsheet are the ones that are showing the best news. So you can edit it so that you can filter it by use, uh, following the instructions here, this one, because this one is locked yet. So you have to make uh, another copy of it so that you can edit it so that you can filter the blue ones, right? So these are the updates on the newsletter. So as you can see, there's still a lot of updates. Also, um, the high volume change, interesting technical price action, the high weekly trade volume, the high growth search activity updates. Also, are also here, as you can see, uh, the link to the Telegram group for the private subscribers. As you can see, here is the spreadsheet. All right, so the red ones have negative news, the orange are neutral, the yellow are fair, the green have good news, the blue are showing the best news. So the blue ones are the best tokens. So you better include this one in your research list or in your portfolio and as you can see in the spreadsheet there are a lot of technical analysis information and if you still don't understand technical analysis you can contact the other guru once you subscribe for preferredcurrency.news and then he will teach you how to understand each and every one of it okay so i think that's it so before i go i just want to say that i am not a financial advisor and everything i say here is not a recommendation for you to buy and sell crypto so you must always do your own research before deciding for yourself, right? So guys, please uh, take note of preferredcurrency.news to receive this kind of newsletter. So isn't the newsletter um, so informative? Well, yes, it is. So if I were you, I will subscribe, subscribe at preferredcurrency.news for $15 a month or $180 a year, right? So guys, this has been Vic once again, um, signing off. Bye-bye.